The sanctions certainly have effects. They create various sorts of difficulties for ordinary Iranians. They raise transactional obstacles and costs for Iranian businesses. They uh, suppress foreign investment in Iran below what it would be if the sanctions weren't there, although the data show that last year uh, foreign investment in Iran continued to expand. I think, though, the disconnect comes when Americans believe that if we just ratchet up sanctions high enough that this will somehow give us strategic leverage over Iranian decision making on the nuclear issue or other matters of concern. I think that's an illusion. I think it's very, very hard to get uh, strategic leverage over this government, over this system. That's why my argument is that what the United States needs to do is to come to terms with the Islamic Republic. We're not going to be able to browbeat them or sanction them or even bomb them into surrender. We need to come to terms with them. It would mean, first of all, accepting the Iranian Revolution and accepting the political order that came out of that revolution, the Islamic Republic, as an enduring and legitimate political entity with legitimate national interests. Then on the basis of that acceptance, the United States would pursue strategically grounded rapprochement with the Islamic Republic, meaning a kind of reciprocal accommodation of each side's core interests. This is the model that President Nixon and Henry Kissinger applied to the uh, opening to China in the early 1970s. I'd say they need to know two things. One is that Iran, under any political order, is going to be a very, very important country for the United States. You consider Iran's enormous hydrocarbon reserves, its geostrategic location at the heart of the Middle East and at the crossroads of the Middle East with Central and South Asia. Iran's demographic and territorial size, its historic identity and regional role. All of those things make Iran a very important country for the United States under virtually any circumstances. The second point that I think people really need to understand is that however much you may like or not like the Islamic Republic, it's not going anywhere. It is actually a legitimate political order. It has a lot of discontent within it, but even those segments of the Iranian population that want to see the Islamic Republic evolve in some significant ways, don't want it to disappear. They still want it to be the Islamic Republic. It is the product of their revolution. It's their system. It's their statement about their own independence. And they don't want to give that up for some model of secular liberalism imposed from the West. And the constituency for getting rid of the Islamic Republic inside Iran is very, very small. This system is not going anywhere. And we need to come to terms with that reality.